Now that we've talked about facts, we also want to learn about dimensions. They are, as we remember in a star schema, clustered around the facts and the purpose of them is to categorize the facts. So we get meaningful context for our measurements. Otherwise, if we just have the total amount of units sold, we don't have really some meaningful insights. And therefore the character of those dimensions is more supportive and descriptive. So we can't measure it, but we use it to describe, for example, the product name or the product category. And this is supporting the facts and help us to analyze and basically filter, group and label our data. So that is what we also commonly refer to as slicing and dicing the data. So these are our three purposes for our dimensions. So later on in a report, for example, we need a filter or we want to group our data in a bar chart, for example, and this is where we want to use the dimensions. And also to make the distinction between dimension and fact a little bit easier, here are some of the common characteristics of dimensions. So as we've learned, the fact tables are aggregatable and therefore they are numerical, but also dimensions can be also numerical, but they are never aggregatable. So this is, for example, if we have the years, so the year in a date table can be of course, or is numerical, but it doesn't make sense to aggregate or add up the years to get a total amount of year. So this is not working. We cannot add up 2019 and 2020 to get another information about our data. So therefore the dimensions are non-aggregatable and their character is of descriptive nature, whereas in the fact we are measuring something. And also while in a fact table we have some things moving or some things happening, we have the dimensions that are a little bit more static. So for example, product name, product category, this is something that is usually not changing or there's not coming anything new, there's nothing happening. Of course, we can have changes in dimensions too, but in general, this data is more static. So these dimensions are of course also in dimension tables. And in these dimension tables, of course, we have also a primary key that is needed to identify every row in this dimension table, but also sometimes we can have an additional foreign key in our dimension. And this will be important when we talk about snowflaked dimensions, which is something that we want to dive a little bit deeper later on. For now, it's enough to understand the basics of dimensions and also it helps to understand some of the common use cases for dimensions. So for example, it can be people. This can be for example, employees, customers, managers, or also something like products, product categories, or also something like places, regions, cities, or addresses. And also things that are time or date related are commonly used as a dimension. For example, we can have such a customer dimension. So we have the customer ID, our primary key, and then we have the different dimensions in this dimension table. And of course, as mentioned, they can sometimes also change. So for example, we can have slowly changing dimensions and this is a specific type of a dimension, which we'll also talk about later on. But now that we have learned about facts and dimensions, we want to dive a little bit deeper into the schemas that can be used. So we've learned we have the star schema and also the snowflake schema. And these are things that we want to now dive a little bit deeper in the next lecture.